Football Mobile Field. Welcome everybody, Drake Hawkins with you, and today we are starting Distant Worlds 2, a Let's Play series. Uh, we're going to be doing the humans today, we're going to be uh, doing a democracy. I'll go through the game start with you right away. I've played a little bit of time in the game, uh, had some time to learn some basics. I shared some of those on some tutorial stuff on the channel, so go check those out if you're interested in some very basic stuff. There's a lot of detail here, so they're like a too long didn't read sort of synopsis of some of the categories uh more to come on that but thank you slytherin for the uh the uh press key for this so i can get you guys started get me started so that i can actually get you some useful content on this so without further ado let's go through the uh setup and the start and it's going to be a very quick go through because i've done a whole bunch of detail on what all the options are we're just going to choose the ones that we're going with and get into the game so the seed here is entirely random. I don't know what it's going to get us, but we'll see. So we're going to be going with a galaxy uh, that's probably... Let's go varied clusters. Let's go varied... Uh, do we want varied clusters or even clusters? Let's go even clusters. Uh, we're going to go with a thousand stars on normal nebula density. Now this is just the nebulas around. I'm okay with that. Uh, the galaxy size, if you go as long, as long as you go at least a thousand, you can get up to like 10 by 10. But I think maybe an 8 by 8 sector. This would be a little too dense. I like the idea of spreading it out a little bit. Some very obvious sort of clusters. All right, let's do that. Uh, galaxy settings, we're going to be going with the uh, galaxy set to pre-warp, pre-warp, restless difficulty on normal uh, research speed. Let's go on, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go normal. I would normally play slow, but I think it would be a little too drawn out for, for the YouTubes. Uh, research visibility. We're going with only next project is visible and the random research paths. Uh, allow tech trading. No, I don't think so. You know what? No, we'll leave the tech trading off. I don't know how well that's balanced, and that is a big deal. If the AIs, uh, every time the AI talks to each other, if they're not uh, busy shooting each other, they're busy handing over researchers, they'll cascade like crazy. All, and likewise, I might be able to walk up to them and say, hey, I got 5,000 credits. Can you give me a new shield tech? That wouldn't be balanced either. So I don't know where that's at. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. I'd really like some feedback on that one for sure. <clears throat> normal pirates. Pirate strength is normal. Uh, proximity. We'll go with average. We could push them a little further away from us, but I think average is fine. I don't want them in my face quite right away. Uh, we will not let them respawn if we wipe. This is only if you wipe them. So if you blow up a ship, they're going to make another one. But if you wipe the entire faction, the faction doesn't come back, uh, which, which is what I want. Um, we're going to go with many on the space creatures. I like that. Uh, colonization, let's leave it at normal, independence normal. Let's go with uh, influence range. I'm going to drop that by half so our bubble is smaller. Should be interesting. And we'll uh, limit our colony range. We'll force our colony range limit down a little. Let's see if we get, uh, well, that might be interesting. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to bite me in the butt later. You know what, leave it, let's leave it at 200 million. It seems fine. Uh, so, like I said, we're going with the humans. Let's uh, let's look at this. Let's look learn what humans are. Apparently, they come from a faraway galaxy. There's rumors of it, anyways. Uh, natural abilities make them excellent diplomats. Human negotiation skills are renowned. I'm just reading down here the third paragraph. Uh, they can tra uh, they can transform nearly any apparently hopeless situation to their advantage. <laughs> humans, we need that ability. Um, they have mysterious path close past cloaked in ambigu ambiguity. It's unclear where they they originally where they originated from. Some say that they actually migrated from another galaxy. Humans themselves claim Seoul as their home system. Hopefully, uh, their preferred habitat are uh, continental forest and grassland. So yeah, that's that's the shtick. Uh, personality wise, a little bit aggressive, a little bit cautious. Um, reproduction rate six percent, so kind of average middling um migration tendency is adventurous uh i think this assimilation rate is how well humans are assimilated into other cultures it might be the other way around it's not clear and there's no pop-up here so if anybody has a feedback on that let me know i've heard a few different things from different uh um beta testers and stuff and, and i'm not sure which way it goes so is this how fast others can assimilate into the human culture so if the mortalins or tekans our colon or in in our area and they want to move in how likely is that or is it how likely humans will assimilate into other cultures i'm not sure um colonization modifiers i just did a weird hand gesture like you can see it colonization modifiers we do like continentals forests and grasslands fairly fairly plant bland there not uh, not huge 
Uh, 5% research bonus is, is huge. So is diplomacy. Uh, espionage, trade income, these are all good things. War, war, war wariness reduction. I like those. Uh, feelings towards other other races. Read it if you want. The Akdarians, uh, Tekans aren't bad. Ikuro aren't bad. A few others as well. Uh, uh, Kaedian? Is that how that's said? Kaedian? Uh, Komenos? <laughs> Sakurans are still here. Yay! Minus 10% with them. They're the best uh, for pretty much everybody. Uh, preferred government types are democracy and republic. We are going to be going with the democracy. Uh, we could do a feudalism, uh, which is a play I'd like to kind of roleplay at some point in the future. I like that idea. It's space feudalism. Uh, space kings. Uh, our infantry are decent. They're they're actually, I would say, oh, probably above average. Like the Tekken are really crappy uh xenox where are they at they're they're sitting at yeah 105 so i think i think that's actually decent our military is okay um we got the salarian society no no empire flag options to like customize them maybe that'll come uh maybe we'll be get the option to actually put a gif or a png file somewhere uh to make that work that'd be cool let's go with democracy this is going to get us another 10 percent in, in uh Population growth, all research up by 10%, colony happiness up by 5%, tourism income and trade income both boosted as well. Uh, I like it. A few negatives there, but not super good, super big, uh, other than like we can be spied on pretty good and people are upset when we fight each other and they don't like going to battle and don't like becoming uh, soldiers. That sort of thing. Uh, this is our starting situation. All right, I, this, is, this is one that's been... This is one that's been uh, eaten at me. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go with this. So our tech level is going to be free warp, warp as I said. I'll, uh, I'll choose a random location for sure. But our starting uh, expansion is going to be starting. The question is, do we go with a, a harder uh, home base or a really good one? or what? I think we're going to have to stick with normal. I think that's where we're going to... I'm wanting... That's kind of where I'm heading. So we got a bunch of uh, gassy, clustery things that are going to cause us some geographical uh, limitations. We've got uh, modestly decent clusters of stars. I'd imagine we have more than enough to get a serious um, empire going if we hold one of those to ourselves. That would be my take. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're going to go with uh, let's go with a dozen. Let's go with a dozen total. So yeah, let's go with a dozen. Uh, us and twelve best friends. Uh, Auto generating star empires. Uh, I'm going to leave all the victory conditions on. I would like to see some of the storylines. Uh, we're going to leave the time limits off. Uh, this is set to 50%. Is it supposed to be? I think it was default at 70. I was fiddling with this during tutorial-y stuff. I think it's default to 70. So we'll put it to 70. I hope. Let's play. All right, let's see what it's given us. Uh, Gudar Borelia. Okay, Gudar Borelia. Hi, Mr. Gudar. Uh, this is uh, Durian 2 is our system. There's a nearby rocky metallic moon. I'm going to change some of these names. Maybe not the, the uh, characters' names, but we're definitely uh, renaming our beautiful home. Durian. Oh, look at that. Zoom in. Pretty. What the heck? Are you sure this is continental? It looks a little on the oceanic side. That's okay. Uh, Durian 2, of course, will become uh, Solaria Prime. Because that's the name. Of course, that's always been his name. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Shades of uh, 1984. <laughs> um, anyways, let's get uh, let's get going here. Uh, I already blew 10 minutes getting us to this point. So, <clears throat> short and long of it is that we have... Uh, we have found information that's been uncovered from the ancient human city runes, basically, uh, the cataclysm that destroyed our ancestors, uh, is, has, le has still left us some traces of information which we've used over the years to, uh, to, uh, to, to some extent, to some value, but now we've learned much more about it and all of a sudden we can make starships, we've learned ways to make starships from this new materials that we've understood and found from the uh, relics and blah blah blah. So. <clears throat> Pretty fantastic. We found technology for early warp field experiments and research labs. This is interesting. This changes each time, but our colony bonus uh, for colony development is 9%. Uh, recruited, recruited Titan strength plus 4%. Interesting. And a 4% scenery. That's a little low on the scenery department, but that's fine. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's pop to that. Okay, dismiss that. Uh, we're going to pause right away. 
There's our friend Gudar. Now, uh, a few things we're going to do literally right off the hop. I'm going to, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, um, there's a lot going on here, but I'm, I'm going to have a look quickly to our policy settings. I want to make sure these held over from previous, um, from previous uh, setups that I did. Seems like they have, I think, let's go look down to, where was it, construction. <clears throat> Yes, good. Now the ship design automated will allow them to automate ships, but it won't stop me from manually making ships. And I think that's where we're going to start immediately. We're going to go to ship design, and I'm going to redesign some of the uh, ships for um, for our purposes. Now these are see, like we don't need. I I don't like the idea of the merchant freighters running with missile launchers. Uh, but I mean. It, it really doesn't matter to me because I'm not paying for those. I'm being paid for them, actually. However, they are using some resources. Not a big deal. First thing I want to look at, though, is our constructor. Let's go in here. Our constructor's probably... Yeah, our constructor has missiles. Uh, can we not edit that? Um, possibly not. Uh, cannot be designed because it's currently in use. Okay. Uh, copy as new, then. Or upgrade? <clears throat> Let's upgrade. There we go, we'll take those off there. Now, uh, proximity sensor, great, I like that. Uh, so this is the ship design. If you haven't seen it yet, let's uh, let's not jump in too uh, blindly without conversation. Uh, I do wanna be usefully informative uh, without dragging our, our butts too long on the details. Uh, there's better players than that, than me, that do that very well. So we'll let them do that, and uh, I'll do my little tutorial videos uh, when I've got enough information on something. So uh, basically our ship has a couple parameters that it's got to fit it within. It's got to fit within a size and a hull size. Well, it's got a hull size of 150. It's got to fit within this size number. So we can't add components that these numbers, 25 for instance for a cargo bay, would add 25 points to the size. So we, for no at no point can we go outside of that number. Um, as far as the crew capacity, we can always add more crew capacity in so right now we can hold 125 165 crew we only need 111 for the current setup cool the maintenance and costs for that that's all in there <clears throat> then down here we have the power ratings so the energy we have an energy collection rating of 50 so that's from our one energy collector basically solar panels uh, and then we've got two different types of uh, power so there's the static energy used Okay, and that is for all the components like running our fuel cells, running our command center, running our cargo bays. Those take a tiny trickle of power. And as long as we can provide that all well, the vehicle is stationary. Now, the, again, it has to be stationary to do that. But if the vehicle is stationary, so uh, bases or constructors while well, they're parked doing a construction job, will gather power from uh, their collectors. They'll fold out their collectors, gather the power sort of thing. Now, what we what that does is that reduces the requirement of the reactors to run. So the reactors are an active fuel draining thing. Even on a base that is stationary, we still apparently have to have reactors. Even if it's 100% solar paneled and it's always parked and it never has the capacity to even move, it still needs to have reactors. So that's unfortunate. Right now our ships are going to be a little wonky with their crazy number of fuel cells on them and, and stuff because we are pre-warp. We do not have a warp bubble of any sort. Uh, so this is our constructor. Its job is just to build stuff. I just wanted to take the weapons off it, have a quick look at what's here. It'll show us our movement specs here. Right now we'll be using no hyperdrive because we don't have it. So our vehicles will be, our ships will be operating primarily on cruise speed. Uh, sprint if they want to run away, but that's not going to be happening anytime soon because everything else that would attack us would have hyperdrive, I'm sure. Um, other than that, we basically I can look at all the weapons and all those other things later. We do have some sensors on this. It's a proximity sensor. It's our construction mach machine. I'm going to take it off. Doesn't matter. The constructors are almost always within our close-in territory, so they're really not that important. Dropping our uh, total size down a little bit, we could put some more on here of something, but I don't think there's anything much that's going to be of value for us. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we could put a directional thruster in, I suppose, but oh, we can't even do that, can we? No, we can't because there's only two engines available. Uh, this thing has three options, but that's if we drop one engine, it'll shovel it to there. So it's just symmet symmetry for it. So uh, weapons we're not using. Again, blue is for the defensive things, shields and armor and such. Uh, green is for your sensor arrays. Uh, purple would be your industrial and hangers and that sort of thing. Uh, yellow is your engines. White is your general categories covering all your 
your power, your uh, fuel, your crew, your command centers, all that jazz. If we look up here, the recommended recommendations here, if it's if there's any red in this, you can't finish the thing. It's absolutely mandatory. In this case, we have a maximum of two engines. There are three slots, but we can only use two. That's all it's telling us with that bottom one. And the Empire has no supply of silicon polymer or um, mebnar. And the reason is we only have our home world right now. So it's warning us that we're using up resources that we cannot currently replace. So that's going to be the change to this one. It's the V2 of our constructor. We're going to go down to our Pathfinder Explorer ship, and we're going to upgrade that as well. You can do the same thing. We're going to drop our missiles off there. We will leave the sensor on, I think, for that one. Yeah, that's probably worth doing. Um, power, energy, and all that is going to be good. Can we get rid of one of the cruise systems? <clears throat> yes, we can, by one point. Excellent. Just, just little trims to save things. That thing has a decent cruise speed. I like it, 62. That's nice. Uh, we have plenty of energy available. We do have a reactor on here. We got lots of fuel, so we can actually look at the range, which is blah, 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 down here somewhere. Fuel range, 473,000 something. Kilometers, I presume? I don't know how that plant pans out. I don't know if any of that makes mathematical sense, but we do have uh, three ion engines on this beast, which is awesome. Uh, reason I'm taking off the, uh, we got the basic survey module on there. We can only have one which is fine. Uh, reason I'm taking off the guns and the and sensors when we don't need them is because uh, we just don't, we just can't afford to be wasting stuff right now. Mining stations is something that I want to adjust as well. Uh, so we'll go down there. We can do a couple things to the mining stations differently. I am going to take all the weapons off for now. They're going to be useless at this point. Uh, basically useless. Anything that's going to be attacking our mining station is basically going to blow it up. No problems. If we have no shields, no armor, Pirates will just pop them like a like a bug. We might as well not waste the guns on it at this point. And we can always upgrade this and retrofit it with proper weapons and shields and stuff later uh, as we get the capacity to do so. Our crew is now 105. If we drop that, it would be 90, which we don't have the capacity to do, or we can't get away with, so we won't be able to do that one here. Collectors, we only have 40 static energy. That's fine. We could input more cargo bays in here. So right now we have, uh, oh, we have two cargo bays, actually which gives us a cargo capacity of 9,600. That's pretty good for our first vessel, our first uh, system here. We don't need two fuel cells. This is a mining base. It's gonna sta be stationary. I don't want it to be filled up with a bunch of fuels. Uh, do we need the extra reactor? No. So we drop, we're thinning these out. Right now it's got a large mining engine on it. We could go ahead and put in uh, some smaller mining engines to harvest resources faster. I think it, it, I don't know what the numbers are. So in uh, Distant Worlds 1, there was a big issue where there was a certain amount of mining that could be done on a specific target at a time. I don't know the meta here. I don't know if this large mining engine can produce all the metal, all the minerals that are available there. I would guess not, but it produces 30 per second and the small one produces 10 per second. We could switch a, we could add a small engine in here and for instance here, and we now have a power reactor power over. Okay, if we drop one of those in, we have now 40 production for mining and, uh, and there, yeah, 40 mining and the large one can get a range of 2,500 uh, for asteroids. So, mm, okay, I don't know if that's worth it, but we're gonna put it in there. So let's save that uh, version there. Now that is upgraded. When we hit upgrade, it removes or it obsolescence, obsolete, obsolets, obs, I don't know. It makes the old um, design, uh, active designs, latest designs, all designs. Let's go all designs. There we go. The exploration ship and the exploration and the constructor ship. The first ones are now set as obsolete right here, which is good. Our mining station as well. Uh, small spaceport is obsolete. I didn't upgrade the spaceport. Why has this been upgraded? From where? <laughs> did I did I bump? I must have bumped a button. Maybe I bumped a button. Now, <clears throat> this is a concern. This spaceport's very expensive, and there might be enough firepower with all of these to actually hold off an attack early on. I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, we got crew capacity absolutely capped out on this, and our size is not far from full as well. So I'm really wondering if this thing, 
if this thing is going to be kind of stuck with this size. Uh, what's the size on these tools, these weapons? 14 and 18. Hmm. I really don't know what the difference is here. 715, 165. What's the difference? This one is a larger version, but the maintenance is lower. What? What have you done? What have you done to my ship? Um, there's just, oh, there's more crew systems. A lot more crew systems on this thing. Wait a second. We have two versions? Hmm. Did not know that was a thing. Um, there's a decent amount of crew for 742 for size. There's an extra reactor and less guns. Strange. I kind of like it. It's got double construction. Did it save a version from a previous test that I was doing? It must have. That's interesting. I think I was fiddling with one and I definitely remember adding another construction yard when I was testing some stuff. So maybe that's what it is. Now, do we have docking yards? I think these construction yards consist of... Yes, they have a docking bay with them. This docking bay provides two docking bays, so if I were to put one in there, that would give us double our docking bays, but it would put us over our size limit. Well, that's unfortunate. We could put a sensors on, but I guess that would probably put us over as well. We could, however, put that right on the center one. Uh, that's going to put us only two points over on our, on our size. Hmm. If we were to switch, say, that's a weird positioning for these. Very weird positioning for these. Go with that, 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 and that, and that. I'm going to go to putting a few missiles on this thing. There, there, maybe uh, one there, and one there. Look at the positioning on those. So the degrees is how is the angle that these things fire at. 270 degrees on those ones is cool, but um, I'm putting in uh, seeker missiles so they can fire off in any direction. Uh, which is which is gonna be fine. That'll bring us down below the max number there. I think this is an okay setup. I, I don't know. No idea what the meta is on this, so maybe it's terrible. We have enough static and en enough energy for it. We don't have extra fuel cells. How much do fuel cells weigh? Ten size, huh? That's gonna put us over again. Stuff's expensive, boys. Expensive. Crew. Yeah, we definitely need the extra crew. That's unfortunate. What is it? What does a crew provide us with right now? 75. And again, research can improve these things dramatically. But this will get us a basic research lab. Uh, note that the research labs have a size of 60, and these basic small facilities only have one uh, general port slot that is over that. Major changes from the previous. So let's go ahead and save that one. Uh, that is the one I just fixed, yeah? Let's obsolete that one. And activate that one. I think that's the one we just did, right? Did I just delete the right one or the wrong one? That's the right one. Okay. So we got two construction yards. We got a proximity sensor on the main. Uh, it seems like a station should have a, a sensor on it. And the rest is really crappy because we're early tech. Uh, escorts we're not going to mess with yet. I'm going to leave the freighters and the mining ships as is. Okay, good. So I just wanted to drop off the, the excess that we had on those things. Let's uh, let time go forward. We should get some... Some pop-ups. There we go. Our first starship has been constructed. Yay! Location of the conspicuous trader. It's an export. Yeah. I'm just a lowly trader, you know? But you're not, dude. You're not. Let's go to our exploration tab here, and we're going to... Are we going to manual it? You know what? I'm going to send you off to explore uh, the... Um, Oswadanap. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's what you are. You're going to explore that thing. Uh, let's look at our research uh, systems here. I want to set up research for... Uh, we do have the labs boosted. That would be a later... Te well, we can add it because we're here. So if I hit this and I pay the cost, it's the cash that we have to pay up front, which is cool. Um, let's see. As we go, I would like recreation systems. I'd like medical systems. And recreation systems. If we do the crew systems, we go from being 75 capacity to being 100 capacity, which means we could drop a crew support on that. Uh, basic commerce we want on the list. I don't want that right yet, though. Docking bays were good. Storage systems, again, that would reduce uh, or increase our capacity by like 10% in most, most areas. Transport systems will be required for us to do anything with the entertainment. So we'll want those on the list. Basic colonization... 
Hmm, just scanning up through these, but definitely transport needs to be on the queue. That's going to be our basic ability to move personnel around. I really like these exploration scanners versus the basic uh, survey modules. This is called a resource scanner. Now, I don't know if the survey module is different as far as this is survey amount 10, survey max level of 15, survey time 120. This one has exploration power, exploration range, and exploration time. Totally different phrases. So surveying may be different than exploration. I think this is the on-planet type of survey stuff, and this is the scanning for rocks. That's that's my guess on these. Now, if that's not the case, then, uh, then I'm not sure. <laughs> Planetary exploration. Ah, yes, look, this is the upgrade from that one. Okay. So this does not replace the other one. This is, gives our exploration ships the ability to swing by and, and buzz over and look at planets really fast. So that might be something we want both in our exploration ships, but I would like that on the list for sure. It's going to cost us a bit of money, though, to get it going. Penetrating scan scanners, huh? What's this for? <clears throat> Again, power. I think this is actually, yeah, this is actually uh, tracking, like a radar system, long-range sensors. Uh, basic countermeasures, tracking, energy collectors. We could get better energy collectors, which would uh, definitely improve the uh, situation there. The right now, 50. The next upgrade goes to 75. That's a hefty boost. Fast mining. Hmm, I like it. Increase our mining capacity by like 50%. No, that is goes from 10 and 30 to 12 and 45. Yeah, the large one gets a real good kick. I like it. I haven't really gone through in deep on these yet, so uh, deep space damage control. I like damage control units. They sound very helpful. System patrol starships, huh? That gives us the frigate, okay. Space construction will uh, allow us small spaceport. Don't we already have that one? Or is this an upgrade? What is this? This is a small spaceport, size 25750. Oh yeah, small spaceport, but it's a bigger small spaceport. Is there like a medium version? Uh, this gives us more weapons ports, or no, does it? No, it doesn't. Um, we do have larger, it looks like we got larger storage capacity and or uh, general ports and stuff like that. Interesting. But the max size is 1100 versus the max size on this one, which is 750 so we could really make a decent station out of that i would love to get that expanded space stations resorts and large mining stations hmm nice that sounds fantastic resort systems would be good for sure i think the dollar sign there means we have to pay stuff up front to get them going right must be uh, armor plating would be nice but we're going to i'm going to actually skim through those i'm going to leave those al alone for now small colony ships small medium mining ships uh, or medium or other mining ships, small passenger. Yeah, all of this remote fuel transfer. Okay, cool. For the uh, capacity to use freighters, maybe? Fuel, uh, fuel. what are they called? Not colliers. Uh, I don't know. Tankers of some sort. Starfighters for our ships. Or our, our, our fighters and bombers. They're um, carrier-type structures. Uh, space boarding to attack other people's or take over other people's ships, which is awesome. Uh, enhanced maneuvering, give us some thrusters. I like it. I'm just I'm just spending some time learning and going through here because I'm no master of this game. So hopefully this is of interest to you guys. If not, I apologize, but where we're at. Uh, better space reactors would be amazing. Oh my goodness, reactor output 16 per second versus... Oh, that's the fighter one, sorry. Uh, this is 54 upgrades to 62. That's decent. Decent improvements. We got more logistic. I do want deflectors and armor. At some point, but that's already 10 things on the queue. Ground combat, we're going to skip. Uh, the weapons, we're honestly going to have to skip at this point. Torpedo weapons, tractor beams, mm, early uh, area weapons. Now, notice we've only got like one version of early pulse weapons. When we research this, we will know more about early pulse weapons, giving us the ability to understand future potential of that, of that tree. So that's how this uh, tech tree works. It's going to be big. It's going to fill out like this far, but uh, later, because right now it's all blind. Uh, we have only the diplomacy on humans, because that's the only species we are aware of right now. 
All right, that's going to be okay. But first thing I want to do is put this... Oh, I guess I, I was going to try to drag and move it, but I guess not. We're going to go right to the top on that one. Research labs would be an improvement over our current research systems, which would be good. Um, this provides medical rating. Now, I think that's similar to the old version. I don't know. I want space commerce on, uh, on our station sooner rather than later. These exploration scanners would be great, but honestly, our ships have to be moving quick before they're really valuable. Uh, space construction would be the bigger stations and a better construction yard. Hmm. Deflectors. I think we'll kind of leave it in this ish category. I, we can shuffle these as we go. All right, but now we do have uh, early warp field online there. That's great. We got 50% of it. I wouldn't mind um, actually speeding this along. So let's, uh, let's zoom back in. Early warp field experiments is right here. Now, <clears throat> it's going to take us 2.82 years with our current research capacity. If I click on it, it'll let me um, uh, cannot cancel it after the project has been paid for. So you, we're basically, uh, what's it called, crash researching. Uh, we spend some number of dollars. Uh, initiate crash research for 3738 credits. On, cash, on hand, we have 23000 so we've got the money to do it. We've got 50% of this left to research. So if we click on that, 2.82 years, and we pay that cost, it's now 1.41. So it's a 50, it's a double speed. The old one, old version of the game, um, I think Distant Worlds 1 was three times speed, but it was much more costly. I don't remember. Uh, but what that did is that basically spent a bunch of money to really rush things, and I really do want to rush that. So let's uh, keep going here. Let's get time going, and we're actually going to speed time up until we know what's going on. Uh, it wants us to build some stuff. It wants us to build a an explorer. Cool, the Mark II, because that's what we have and the spaceport, which we will definitely do. Both of those are on the queue now. If I click on the planet, we can see the things that the planet has. Currently it has steel and carbonite. I'm not sure, did they fix the bug where planets were showing their information even though they shouldn't be? Yep, still, no, they didn't fix it. Um, so we only know, supposed to know, that we have carbonite and steel here. If we click on the colonies tab, uh, while this lasts, um, it's showing what's what's going to be visible after we scan it. So we don't get it yet, but we know what's there. Uh, Grixian Nectar. Now, Grixian Nectar at 53% of abundance is going to be definitely worth scouting for. Uh, I don't remember what the Grixian Nectar is, but we can find out by going in here to the Galactopedia. Uh, game concepts? No, we want resources. Um, Grixian Nectar right there. Grixian Nectar gives us a colony development bonus of 2%, population growth of 1%, and plague curing of 2%. Nice. Nectar is a potent medicine that's found in the, on continental worlds. The nectar is produced by large uh, tubes of the flowers of the Grixian tree. The nectar uh, has a radiant pink color. My daughter would be happy. It is refined and combined uh, with other ingredients to create medicine that helps break fevers. Cool. Not that we're likely to have the plague yet, but that'll be nice. So what we can do with that... Uh, to deal with that is we can actually get our scouting ship, which is... Uh, where is our... Is that our scout ship? That is our constructor. No, that's not. That's our scout ship. We could go scout the planet here. And that might be worth doing first. Hmm. Do we do that first? Or do we start mining? Yeah, let's do that first. I. Th you know what? No. I want. I want you to scout. Scan here. Don't refuel, I want you to survey Solaria, uh, Solaria Prime. So what that's going to do is he's going to sit there and he's going to use that survey scanner to give a bit of a deeper look at what uh, might be hidden that we definitely don't know is there. So, you know, until they fix that, we're definitely going to use it because it's probably the only bug that I know of that's left that's going to be of help to us at this point. We're using 0.31 per second on the polymer. Uh, we have 424 of it in stock. So we're not far off from being out of it. Now, uh, Memnar and Polymer are both being used uh, by the planet, I believe, as well as the... We got time right in here? Let's just speed up to 4x. Uh, I think the colonies use them. Is there a way to find out what the colony is consuming? I'm curious. Army templates. I'd like to know what the planet actually... Um, uses. 
Resource shortages. Okay, right here. Resource stock and levels. On hand, maintain, maintain, reserve, other sources. Okay. That's not giving us what we need. It's not telling me what is using it, but anyways. Um, we do get mined, we do mine steel here and we mine carbonite here, so that's something. I, I'd like to see what the planet actually consumes. That would be interesting. This is a four-star planet, apparently. All right, come on. Come on, fastness. Come on, speed, speedy timeness. Uh, the game is definitely uh, a work in progress, or a, a slow progress at the beginning. That mining ship says it's under construction, it just means it's queued. This one is the one that's actively on the construction list. So if I, oh, there we go, it just finished. Excellent. So this just, just now finished. If I click on the home world here, this is the mining queue. Right now, the first one on the left here is actually being produced. That's the ship we were just looking at a moment ago. The, uh, the Bountiful Maneuver. It's an exploration ship that we queued up. And then the uh, Solari Prime Starport comes next. Now, if we wanted to switch the order here, we could by, uh, what is it, Can, this wing. Select them and move them around. Uh, we don't. We can't take it and move it any further because the, the active one, once it's started, has to be completed uh, before you can switch to something else. You can't leave one half, uh, half baked hanging out in space. So, uh, construction ship, lovely. Go there. I don't know if our ships are. Stop pausing, Drake. If our ships are actually automated or manual. If I tell him to automate, what's he going to do? Auto build mining stations, auto build research stations, auto build monitoring stations, auto build resorts, auto salvage. Fully automate. Interesting. What I do want him to do actually is build a. Oh, we can't, can we? I was going to say build a research facility, but I don't think we can build that unless we have like a research bonus somewhere. Is that true? Let's see. Can we uh, right click here? No, we just move to the place. Can we move and build? Nope. Uh, well, we could build a mining station over here, interestingly enough, uh, which is a little weird to me because we don't know what's there. I, I'm not sure why. Oh, flashing. Um, did you scan this already? No, you did not. You're still working on it? I gotta get used to the controls again. No mission. This is the... Why? Why are you no mission, dude? Survey. I'm pretty sure I told you to survey it. I must have screwed that up, too. Num, 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 num. I'm so good at this. Uh, let's see. What do we got there? That's another one. That's some mining vessels. I do like the 3D issue. There's the construction project in the works. 86% done. Uh, I'm gonna let this guy automate to... Where is it? There you are. You just got your energy. Oh, you're still under construction though. There you go. Now he's done. I like it. There's like this kind of weird delaying effect. But uh, we're gonna... We got that going. We've had a look at the science. We've had a look at uh, how we're going to design our basic buildings. We're trying to sort of get something going as far as the uh, building project goes here. I want this new expedition ship, or exploration rather, ship this one right here. I want you to come over here and survey. Bountiful Maneuver is going to come survey our moon. Osla Denup over here. Can I actually rename them? I cannot name them unless I've got a colony there. A little odd. Interesting. I, that seems seems a little weird to me, but okay. All right, well, that's where we're going to end up cutting uh, for today. I want these things to be about half an hour, and we did already go way over because we had that intro step time. So we'll get about a half an hour of gameplay in, in each episode, hopefully, and uh, move forward from there. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Please do hit the like button on your way out if you are. And uh, we've got other content on the channel, so why not check it out? Thanks a bunch. See you in game.